Mars does a research station. Two weeks in isolation. Six near strangers. Meet Olivia Allen, Shane Hume, Dylan Nixteen, Sean Haryaharan, Alex Goldrup, and Julio Hernandez. See the highs and the lows as we close the airlock at MPRS. My name is Alex, I'm 27 years old, and I've recently completed my Master's in Human Factors, which is the intersection between hardware design and human psychology, and my emphasis was in microgravity operations. When I'm not on Mars, I work for NanoRax, which is one of the commercial space industry companies, and at NanoRax specifically I'm on the Outpost program, which is an initiative to turn space debris into platforms in orbit for science and human activity. My role on this mission is health and safety officer, which means I'm responsible for the well-being of the crew. I'm trained to respond to medical emergencies as a first responder, but it's also important for me to be aware of the crew's mental health and other factors that could impact our cohesion and general functioning. Mars is not Earth. It's a dangerous environment with a lot of known and unknown risks and safety factors. And without the proper procedures, the whole team could be at risk. What I'm most looking forward to is taking a lot of the academic information that I learned in the classroom and putting it to the test. I spent a lot of time learning about human behavior and information processing, especially in space flight scenarios. And in theory, a Mars simulation like this would be the best place to watch that play out. So I guess we'll see what happens. I think the biggest challenge for me will be accepting that mistakes are gonna be made and I'm gonna be the one to make some of them. Obviously, being at this station is a huge resource and we want to make the most out of it, but we're not a group of robots going to Mars, we're a crew of human beings. And part of developing best practices is learning from what doesn't work. And I think it's going to be important for us to keep that in perspective. Hello, my name is Shravan Hariharan and I'm an incoming graduate student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the Aeronautics and Astronautics Department. I'm a recent graduate from Georgia Tech with a degree in aerospace engineering, Go Jackets, and I have really made it my career goal to get as much hands-on engineering experience as possible. I've worked at companies like NASA Langley, Northrop Grumman, most recently at Blue Origin on the human landing system, as well as startups like Spin Launch, and right now I'm currently interning at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory working on the Mars Sample Return Campaign. My role on this crew is of the crew engineer. What that means is essentially I'm responsible for maintaining and checking up on the operation of all of the technical systems in our habitat. This includes things like our water filtration system, the power system, and even the septic system. And then on a little bit more of the space side, the maintenance and operation of our rovers and our spacesuits. Uh, this is a role that I've been preparing for for years by learning how to get hands-on experience in terms of real engineering projects working with my hands and learning how to quickly identify a problem, test out different solutions, and then ensure that it works so that safety can remain our top priority. What I'm looking forward to is learning how to live like a Martian. I've worked on designing missions to land robots on Mars, but never before have hands-on experience involving humans. We still don't know what to expect in terms of the technical challenges we'll face, the behavioral interactions between the crew, and the incredible science that's ahead of us. And there's no better place, like right here, to get that kind of experience and to prepare ourselves for hopefully the next generation of human spaceflight. The hardest part for me, in simple words, is the pressure of my responsibility. Being, being crew engineer is behind the scenes. I'm not working as much on the science of the mission. That being said, the systems that I'm responsible for are what are keeping us safe and healthy in this isolated desert environment. I know that we have mission support in the case of an emergency, and we have an incredible crew and we help each other out. But at the end of the day, the responsibility for maintenance of HAB and our engineering operations defaults to the crew engineer, and that is a responsibility that I have to bear and I'm coming to terms with. I am confident that we'll be able to succeed in this mission, uh, but the thought is still always on the back of my mind, do I have the right stuff to keep our crew safe? Hi, I'm Olivia Etlin. I recently graduated, I just graduated from UCLA with a degree in Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology. Currently, I work for California State Parks and I intern with um, Heal the Bay and True People, two environmental nonprofits based in Los Angeles.
I'm the crew scientist on this mission and part of my responsibility is going to be taking care of my project, which is the crew's hydroponic garden. Uh, I will also be helping my teammates with their extremophiles, geology, and botany experiments. Uh, most of what I do for work in real life involves um, field work, collecting and analyzing data, which makes me the perfect person for this job. I'm sort of the odd person out on this mission. I'm the only one that doesn't come from an aerospace background, but that is what I'm the most excited about, and that's completely immersing myself in the aerospace culture and learning as much as I can during this analog. I'm not sure how many grams of dehydrated cheese they gave us, but it's not gonna be enough to last all six of us for two weeks. Hi, my name is Julio Hernandez, and I am a current fifth year PhD student at Purdue University. Although my educational experience started at San Jacinto Community College with an associate's degree and then at University of the Pacific with a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering and engineering sciences. On top of that, I had some professional experience via co-ops at Lawrence Livermore National Labs in the environmental restoration department and in the National Ignition Facility. I serve as the crew's botanist and let me tell you it's a very challenging position for me because it's outside my normal comfort zone of being an engineer. Uh, in this role I help grow plants within our hydroponics pay as well as I conduct my own experiment in which I'm investigating the effects of how different soil compositions affect the growth of plant life and this is going to be a very important question to answer so that we can have a sustainable presence in outer space. Being at the Mars as a research station is a great opportunity for someone, anyone who's in interested in human space exploration to live like an astronaut here on Earth to experience the exact same isolation and work, close working proximity as any astronaut has done out in space. Uh, but more importantly for me is that I want to experience what, what my dad experienced when he went up into space and so that one day I may follow his footsteps but maybe even go one step further. Not only is it challenging for me to fulfill the role of the crew botanist given my engineering background but I think the hardest part of the sim is balancing my obligation to my crew to be a good crewmate and a team member with the expectations of my PhD program, my PhD advisor, and all of my collaborators whose work still goes on regardless of whether I'm here or not, in which I look forward to returning to with this experience to build upon that. Hello, my name is Shayna Hume and I'm a PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder in Martian Entry, Descent, and Landing. I have a background in aerospace engineering from my undergraduate studies at the University of Miami and in the past I have worked at NASA Goddard, Lockheed Martin Space, Lockheed Martin Aeronautics, and the Aerospace Corporation. I am interested not only in how we can develop the technology to land on Mars, but also how we can live sustainably there in the near future of humanity. I am serving as Crew 245's Executive Officer, which means that I handle a significant amount of the crew's logistics. This can include daily report writing, communications with mission support, and going through the many, many checklists that we have. This role is an excellent fit for me because not only do I have the chance to use my technical abilities to create science and engineering work on Mars, but I also get to utilize my interpersonal skill sets and make sure that the simulation runs smoothly from one crew member to the next, facilitating each of their studies along the way. What I'm looking forward to most is the ability to conduct field research in astrobiology. Years and years ago, I began my career in astrobiology at NASA Goddard when I was just doing my first internship at the age of 17. Now I'm doing soil sampling on our EVAs, which will help us to determine the microbial life within the terrains around us. That's a unique experience, as most of my research is in simulations done on computers for astrodynamics. 
being able to learn how astrobiology works in the field and learning to be a field scientist myself is an amazing experience as it will prepare me for the rest of my lifetime as an analog and hopefully as a future astronaut. The hardest part for me about this mission is the fact that we are both living and working in a very confined space and we are virtually on call 24-7, just like an astronaut would be. It's vital to come at every single day with as much energy and attention as possible, and so it's necessary to learn how to recharge your batteries while still being in this on-call situation in order to make the most of our time here. My name is Dylan Dickstein. I'm a PhD candidate at UCLA in aerospace engineering. I did my bachelor's also in aerospace uh, from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I'm a pilot, I'm a scuba diver. I've done an expedition down to Antarctica and I'm excited to be here on Mars. And I'm proud to be our crew commander. But what that involves will be daily oversight of the logistics, uh, making sure our scientific objectives are aligned well for a Martian mission, making sure we're safe, making sure we work as a team. That'll, that'll certainly be a challenge that we'll, we'll run into. Uh, and making sure also that everyone feels empowered. Every individual will be able to lead different projects and, and it's, it's really important to me that everyone can, can lead at certain points. Uh, while not easy by any means, I do feel well prepared for this role. I have led small teams down to Antarctica and I have other experience leading small teams uh, at SpaceX, at Virgin Galactic and Aerospace Corporation, as well as United Launch Alliance. Uh, but we shall see. It'll, it'll be an interesting two weeks. Personally, I'm most excited to share this rare opportunity with you. We ourselves are experiencing what it's like to live as though astronauts on Mars for the next two weeks. We're very excited to do so. But things might not always be perfect. We're going to run into problems, and I'm sure we'll have to come up with interesting solutions to solve them. And being able to communicate that to you is really what this is all about. I think the hardest part for me will be maintaining the accuracy of the simulation. It's really important to me that we are true to ourselves uh, in that we are astronauts on Mars. That's what we are for the next two weeks. But we have, we have really no idea how difficult it is to live there. It would be really tough. You are, you are isolated beyond belief. You are living on a planet that's not meant for you. But only with the right engineering science and procedures could it, can it even be possible. And here we are in Utah doing our best to simulate this. Now we can we can get some things right on the money, but some things are going to be very tough. And as commander, it is important to me that my team experiences the most accurate Martian simulation we can. And and I'm going to do my best to make sure that happens. 